Hello everyone, I'm Subrenya, uh, working as a cloud architect in CIAS. So, uh, in today's uh, study jam session, we will be uh, learning about deploying your website on cloud run uh, with uh, hands on labs. So about a short intro uh, on speakers today, as I told already, I'm a cloud architect working in CIAS. I will mostly working on project delivery and uh, uh, solutioning and cloud architecture. So Arun, Arun Kumar Selvaraj is a principal solution architect. So uh, he will be working on uh, uh, large enterprise customers and solutioning and designing architecture. Yang Yang is a partner engineer uh, from Google. We will be working with her for uh, customer opportunities. So about today's agenda, uh, I will be uh, giving quick intro about CIAS. Uh, then Arun, uh, uh, then Yang N will be uh, taking care of cloud run. Uh, after that, Arun will be taking care of uh, lab and walkthrough. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, we will be having QA. So in meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can post all the all your questions in the chat box, so we can uh, answer your questions. So intro about CIAS, uh, CIAS is a cloud native uh, company. So we focus uh, based on uh, AI, ML and uh, cloud business transformation. So we work uh, mostly on um, cl cutting cloud computing technologies uh, to large enterprise customers, uh, mid-market SMB. So we focus mainly on cloud adaption and uh, cloud optimization. So we are uh, totally eight, uh, 800 plus people working across five plus countries in 15 plus locations. Uh, we worked on 3000 plus clients. So CS awarded uh, Google Cloud Premier Partner, AWS Advanced Consulting Partner, Google Product Engineering Engagements. So about GCP capabilities we have, uh, we are a Google uh, Cloud uh, managed service provider across uh, globally. Uh, in specialization, so we have this specialization, work transformation, infrastructure, work transformation enterprise, cloud migration, location-based services, data analytics. Uh, Yang Yang, over to you. Um, thank you. Hi everyone. I'm Young and um, I'm the partner customer engineer from Google. And to begin with, I will just have a brief overview of what Cloud Run is. Um, so today um, we'll have about 20 minutes of this overview with a slide. And then after me, you will get to have actual hands-on experience with our quick lab. Um, Cloud Run is our serverless on-demand platform to run your code. And I will say this is one of the easiest way to run your code um in the serverless architecture and before i begin everything i just want to emphasize that this is a really easy to use solution so we see that most of our first time customers start to use it in less than five minutes so and if, even though it's like very easy to use but it can still serve a pretty complex mission critical um, applications as well so i'll go through how we do that in the 20 minutes of overview and I believe after this one, two hour session um, that we are running with Sears today, right after the session, you'll be able to start using Cloud Run without much difficulty. So to help you um, on that, I will just go through what Cloud Run is. So as a developer um, or operation engineer, um, how your workload is gonna be with a Cloud Run. So I will introduce that at the beginning. And then I will go through what are the typical use cases um, and also there are use cases that Cloud Run doesn't really fit. So I will go through what are the good and bad use cases for Cloud Run. Um, and if you wanna use Cloud Run for production, a lot of customers ask us about how our high availability features. So I will also go through that. And also um, if you haven't used any serverless architecture, there can be some concerns. So I will also address that. And I will finish the session and hand it over to uh, the lab as well. Let me start with uh, what is Cloud Run. Um, so in the simple flow, if you start to use Cloud Run, there can be only like three easy steps. So first, 
you write your own code. You can use any language that you want to use. And then you build and package them into a container image. And then from here, you simply bring the image to our Cloud Run to make it up and running whenever the request is coming. So actually, Cloud Run is serverless. So only when the request is coming, when request is coming, and when you receive the request, then Cloud Run will spin up the container to run the code. And after that, it's going to be terminated. And then after it's um, spinned up, you will get to have a unique HTTP URL to um, run it. So this workflow, three step, we call it as a container-based workflow. But um, if you're focus, if you want to focus more on the writing code itself, and if you don't want to handle all this packaging and containerization of your code, and then we also have the second way to do this. We have source-based workflow. The difference is once you write the code, we just send it to the cloud run. So you don't have to actually package it in the container image by yourself. So in the cloud run, we leverage this um, open source project called build pack. So once you send the code to cloud run, all the packaging will be handled by build pack, and then you will come. You will just you will just get to have the container image and get it deployed to Web app. So this is the one of the easiest way to make your source code into a HTTP endpoint. So if you want to spin up something really easily and quickly. And if you want to offload all the burden, this is the best way to um, yeah, do that. And if you want to run some app web requests, there's another thing. You also have to worry about the security. So Cloud Run also helps you to serve the serve and handle the HTTP serving. So once you have Cloud Run, we will expose certain domain to the client so they can so we can accept the um, request. So we can either expose our own default domain, or if you have yours already, you can also customize it. And actually, that's not all. To serve them, you have to set up the security setting. But Cloud Run, you take care of everything. So within the Cloud Run, we will generate the valid SSL certificate. And we will also configure the term SSL termination. And on top of that, we will also handle all the incoming requests, decryption, and forwarding as well. So all these things are all handled by Cloud Run. So you just write the code. And then you spin, uh, Cloud Run is spin up the container and also handle the security. So these are the all benefits that you can get in the management and operation perspective. But you also have one more benefit by having Cloud Run in, in the financial um, yeah, build perspective. Because this is serverless, you get to pay only when this is actually running. So there won't be any standby costs involved. So we actually charge you only when the containers are actually serving the web request. So as you see here, we, um, the blue, blue uh, parts are the build parts. So only when you're actually processing them, then we will be built. So in the person perspective, you get to save a lot of um, building costs that you are just standby and not using anything. And on top of that, um, the time unit that we use to charge the uh, workload it's um, in the unit of 100 milliseconds. So you can also very economic as well. And in terms of um, yeah operation, you can use any language that you want, as long as they can be compiled in Linux 64 bit. So of course, we support all this common language, Java, Python, Node.js. You can just use whatever language you want. We also support not very common language like COBOL, Haskell, and Perl, as long as th those are Linux based. So you can just have all the flexibility of your own choice and then still run it in the easiest way. So in summary, Cloud Run runs and automates the container on demand. And it will help you to handle all the web requests with the security settings. And you can either have source-based or container-based workflow, depending on whether you want to containerize it by yourself or not. So if you do the containerization by yourself, you can have more flexibility. But if you offload it to Cloud Run, you will have yeah, easier management. And also, we'll handle HTTPS serving. And also, since it's a serverless pay-per-use architecture, then you will save a lot of cost as well. So these were the brief, very brief overview of Cloud Run. Um, and let me go through what are the typical use cases. But before we go, is there any question? Okay. I don't see anything on the chat. If you have any question, please leave it on the chat. So Cloud Run, um, so far, we saw that it's really easy to use. So let me, uh, yeah, this one is coming as well. So this is 
Cloud Run is not really recommended for this off-the-shelf kind of application. So like SAP or code hosting, we don't recommend. So like it, uh, in the use case, I'll also cover that. The typical use cases, um, I'll have a brief overview and go deeper into them one by one. Um, so of course, we can use Cloud Run to serve public API, or we can also serve a um, public website. Or if you want to have an internal um, line of business application for your employees only, then you can also use Cloud Run, and we will also support the identity, pro uh, identity authentication to let employees in. And also, we support the microservice of architecture. So instead of having one app, if you want to split it into different services, we will also help you to um, communicate them. And also, we support event-driven processing and also scheduled processing. So let me go through them one by one. So, <clears throat> so, so this is simplest um, thing. So if you want to store something on the database, but before that, if you want to yeah, do something with the REST API, or if you want to have some small website to before you actually push them to the database, you can use Cloud Run service to run the API or run the app. This is very simple. But if you want to have one step further and run the public website, you can still have Cloud Run service to run some e-commerce website, for example. And then you can connect it to the database. You can also connect it to Redis to store some user sessions. And also, you can connect it to the third-party API. And one other good thing is that this is um, running on Google Cloud. So you can also leverage all the Google's, um, Google's other tools to make it happen. So for example, you can also leverage Cloud CDN. This is our content caching to improve the performance. Or if you want to have the more security setting, you can also leverage Cloud Armor to filter the malicious inbound traffic. This was for the public website. But in case that you want to run it for the internal um, line of business application, then you can also leverage our IEAP, um, Identity Over Proxy, to actually authenticate the users so only the employees can access this website. And all those things are supported together with Google Cloud um, solutions. And it's going to be very easy to integrate them. And here, we are having this website as one single service. But we also support the microservice architecture. So if you want to split them into multiple services, then you can have them. Yeah, here you have split them into three different services. You have one service for front end and two different services for different da database. Um, so in one project, by default, we can you can have up to a thousand different services. But if you wanna have more services than a thousand, you can always open a support ticket to us, and then we're gonna increase the quota. And if you wanna have microservice, there's one other thing that you have to take care of, which is the networking and communication between different services. And Cloud Run also support that by having direct RPC. You can use REST API or gRPC. Or you can also use use messaging tool like PopSub. So we also do support microservices. So those were the how we do the architecture. And since this is a serverless, um, when those will be spinned up, um, there can be event processing, um, event driven processing, or scheduled processing. So if you go into the event driven processing, um, then only when there's a web request, then Cloud Run will spin up the container. So Cloud Run will hold your code, and it will spin up only when it's needed. And one of the good example is, um, yeah, we can be the hospital. So when the patient comes and they probably take some scan of um, yeah, X-ray or anything, but before you send it to the actual like workloads for the analytics, you might have to change the format so this modern um, applications can read that. So in that case, you can spin up Cloud Run to process the medical scan and convert it into the modern format. And then, yeah, you can so you can forward this modern format to different analytics tools or some other systems. So here, um, probably you need them only when those patients visit and take the scan. So it's a waste if you have to keep it all the time. So this is a good example to um, spin up the Cloud Run containers when it's needed. So this is an event-driven processing. But you can also have a schedule processing as well. So you can just set some certain timer that you want to run this workload. And one example can be like issuing the invoice. So if you have to issue invoice to the customer once a month, then you can run a Cloud Run service to issue the invoice and send it to the customer. Um, so this can be done by the scheduled uh, approach. 
in one note that we have to take care is that if the request is taking over 30 minutes, then we might retire the container. So if the work, the processing is gonna take over 30 minutes, um, yeah, we don't recommend you to use this feature. So those were, um, yeah, the good examples of using Cloud Run. Um, and, but there are other cases that you shouldn't use Cloud Run. Firstly, um, we don't recommend you to use off the shell applications. So like just someone was asking about the database before. So those can be the off the shell um, applications because Cloud Run is still serverless and it runs on containers. So it inherits the um, limitation of the container runtime um, to just to say, which means that Cloud Run runs the container only when there's a request. And after that, it's gonna terminate the container. So, and this kind of behavior is not expected for those database or of the shell applications. So though in those cases, we recommend you to use Compute Engine or um, our Kubernetes engine. And secondly, um, this is actually suitable for a quick job. So if your job is gonna take over an hour, um, then either you split your big work into a smaller task, which will take less time, or you run it on Google Compute Engine or GKE um, as well. And also Cloud Run is not really suitable for massive streaming or batch data processing. So in that case, we have other solution of Dataflow to serve that better. And also if your workload is something that requires an intensive resource, like for example, if you wanna train the machine learning models, then probably GPU will be required. So in those cases, um, we also recommend you to use other workloads and Cloud Run because those are not suitable. So those are the use cases, um, yeah, good and bad use cases of Cloud Run. So let me check if there was any question. Ah, yeah, I see Arun is answering them. Uh, yeah, then we're gonna talk about the load balancer here, uh, which was the question here. So let's talk about the high availability. This is very critical to actually run it on production. So for the high ability, I'm gonna talk about three things. First, about the auto scaling. Um, and secondly, about um, the updates. When you wanna update the code, um, how, how it can be done. And also load balancing and also like redundancy uh, by having that. So first, of all, if you talk about the auto scaling, it's pretty simple. It's pretty much the same as um, what we are doing with the compute. So in each of the service, we're gonna have an internal load balancer. And this load balancer, when there are much load, uh, more load coming in, then it's gonna spin up more containers to serve them. And if it observes that those um, loads are getting smaller, then it's gonna terminate the containers that they, that they don't need anymore. And if they see any broken container, they will of course do the auto healing to replace it to the healthy container. This is fairly simple. Um, and all these things are handled by Google Cloud Run itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, and let's talk about how we do the update. So you can have, actually in one service, you can have different revisions. Revisions here, I mean, having the immutable copy of the container image and the service configuration. So in one service, you can have two, three different revisions. So you can have order revision and newer revision. And within the Cloud Run using the load balancer, you can balance the road. So you can slowly roll up more traffic towards the newer revision. So you can um, adjust the percentage, like 90% traffic going to the newer version and 10% going to the old version. Or you can just use it 100% to spin up, um, in, to change it to the newer version immediately. This can be also be done very smoothly and um, yeah, it's handled by Cloud Run. And lastly, um, you can also use load balancer to gain more redundancy and distribute the load. There are two ways. If you are okay with the zonal um, redundancy, you can have internal load balancer running on the region. So for example, if your service is running on Singapore region and within Singapore region, we have different zones as well. So if you have a cloud run internal load balancer in, the, in this region, and then we will distribute, we can distribute the load to different zones and so so it's gonna be equally distributed. And also if one zone goes down, it will still um, have it up and running. So you can also gain the redundancy. But if this zone level redundancy is not enough for you, you can also have global level redundancy. So you can also have global load balancer. So your um, workload can be distributed across different regions. Um, and by the way, having this global load balancer is one of Google's unique feature. Not all cloud vendors have that. 
Uh, okay, so that was about high availability. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'll answer that later. I can read them all. Um, so um, some of you concerns about um, yeah, Cloud Run. So there are concerns that come through the serverless architecture. So we'll just want to cover them so you can um, have the best practice. So firstly, there are concerns about the auto scaling cost. So as I said, when there's work more workload, the load balancer will spin up more containers um, to to serve all the required requests. Uh, but if you don't have very big um, bill uh, that you didn't really want to have, then you can also control the number of containers that you want to spin up. So you can put some threshold so you don't have the overcharged bill um, in case that your cost cost is a big concern for you. And another thing is that we scale really fast. So spinning up like 10 more, a uh, thousand more container would take less than 30 seconds. So you have to make sure that the downstream system can actually handle the load as well. So if the cloud runs scales and it's gonna send a lot of traffic to the downstream system, and you have to either make sure that this downstream system can also handle that, or you put some sort of threshold on the cloud run so you don't burden the downstream system. And lastly, we get a lot of questions about the portability. Um, and this one can be actually addressed pretty easily. So portability issue um, comes when the customer doesn't want to tie to a specific vendor, or if they plan to launch their, um, yeah, launch, launch their solution to the country where Google Cloud doesn't have a region in. So in that case, it can be yeah, pretty easily addressed. So container itself is portable, as you know. You can just they can simply bring the container image and deploy, uh, deploy it somewhere else if they need. And another way to approach them is leveraging Knative. Knative is an open source platform, an uh, open source project, so you can also deploy it anywhere. And Cloud Run platform is fully compatible with Knative. So if you leverage that, you can simply implement the same container runtime contract as Cloud Run and port it over to your on-prem or other um, region um, using Knative. So yeah, those are all. As I said, this is a fairly simple, quite um, simple solution. There was nothing very difficult to understand this. So it's always your choice. You can either have serverless architecture and build your own. But um, yeah, if you use Cloud Run. Cloud Run, you run and automate, auto scale your application as you need. And also, it's going to help you to serve the web request. It also helps you to have some microservice architecture application. And it also serves event driven or scheduled tasks as well. And then it will also help you to scale automatically. And then you can also do some built in, use built in load balancing to also update and also distribute the load and also have some redundancy. And lastly, um, yeah, the Cloud Run is of course designed to make the developer more efficient. So instead of managing all these small tasks, developers and operation team can actually go back and yeah, use their time to make it more, more, more valuable. So that was a quick intro of um, Cloud Run. So I believe the questions were answered by Aaron. Um, so let me hand it over to Arun, so we can have the hands on left. Okay. Thank you, Yongyun, for a very detailed presentation on Cloud Run. So let me take over the screen. Share my screen. Okay, hope you all can see my screen. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, myself, Arun Kumar. I'm a principal cloud architect working in CS, and I'm also a Google Cloud Guru. So I will be giving you an overview of what you are going to do in the lab later on. So I'll walk you through the lab. What are the things that you're going to do? Everything. So first, before we begin, first you need to know what is the problem that you're trying to solve. So I'll give you an overview of what is that that you're going to solve. So deploying your websites can be very difficult with all the overhead of creating and managing the VMs, clusters, pods, services, etc. This is fine for larger multi-tiered applications. But if you are just trying to get your website deployed and visible, it's a lot of overhead. 
you don't get the flexibility to scale your applications like when you anticipate more request when it should scale up and when there is no request it should scale down so all these there should be a flexibility to handle all this there should there needs to be extended delays in uh, there will be extended delays in deploying the container to production and uh, you wouldn't be able to port your application so that it can run anywhere so all these are problems when you consider deploying your website and obviously you don't want to spend your time in doing all these things but which which all these can be automated by a readily available service so the solution yes that's cloud run to so to give a quick recap on what uh, yang gun presented earlier cloud run is based on the google's knative framework it is nothing knative is nothing but the kubernetes based platform to build deploy and manage modern serverless workloads so you can manage and deploy your website with without any of the infrastructure overhead you experience with a vm or pure kubernetes based deployments so and it also gives you the ability to scale to zero when there are no requests coming to your website so just write your code using your any of your favorite languages like go python java ruby node js anything and put it to anywhere so cloud run charges for exact resources that you use it it makes the app development and deployment simpler and faster and it's fully integrated with cloud code cloud build cloud monitoring cloud logging for all these in important services that you need to create for a ci cd pipeline to enhance the end to end developer experience cloud run brings the serverless development to containers and can be run either on the gke the google kubernetes engine clusters or on a fully managed pass solution provided by the cloud run scenario so what is it that you are going to do in the lab so this is what you are going to do this is a high level overview of what you are going to deploy and test first you will be creating a docker container from your application and then deploy the container to cloud run modify the website make some changes to the website so that you can release a new version and finally roll out that new version with zero turn down time that's very important with zero down time i will explain you later what is the or that is about architecture so this is the sample architecture of the deployment flow on the cloud run hosting that what you are going to do in the lab so first you start with your docker image that's created via cloud build which gets triggered from the cloud shell then deploy the image out to cloud run from a command in cloud shell then you will update a parameter and redeploy another version uh you will make a changes to your website and redeploy it again to view the need new changes all with zero run time so as you can see from the diagram the services used are cloud source repositories cloud build and cloud run if you want to enable more uh, monitoring and logging you can also do it via cloud logging feature but for lab purpose we are not going to do that here so this is a high level architecture next i'll go step by step first is the source repository part so for the lab purpose you will be using an existing website so if you remember from previous youngins presentation you will remember that you have to write a code and you have to deploy the changes to the cloud but for lab purpose to make your things easier we have already we already have uh, created the code and we will give you an existing website since you are deploying an existing website you just need to clone the source and you can focus more on creating the docker images and deploying it to cloud so first clone it clone the git repo to your cloud shell instance then install the node js dependencies so that you can test the application before deploying you can also preview it all this from the cloud shell so there is a preview by option available so you can preview what the application is about next is the docker container part so now you have the source files ready to go now it is time to dockerize your application so usually right there will be a two step approach where you will first you will build a docker container and then push it to your registry to store the image for the gke to pull from but here in uh, cloud run you can do it easily in just one step so first you will you will use cloud build to build the docker container and put the image in the container registry all in a single command so i will later we will see in the lab what the command is about and how you can do this in a single step so cloud build will compress the files from the directory and move them to a cloud storage bucket so we use cloud storage to store our files uh, from the directory the build process will then take the all the files from the bucket and use the docker file which is also present in the same directory to run the docker build process 
So while running it, you will use the tag flag. So uh, I find tag, tag flag with the host as gcr.io. That is the gcr container registry for the Docker image. And because of this, the resulting Docker image will be pushed to the container registry. So that's how the whatever the files you are building it using Docker build, everything will be pushed to the gcr.io because you are giving the, the giving this in the tag flag. You can view all this build details, build history, uh, whether it is a success or failure, what is it that has been built, everything in real time in the Cloud Build console. Next. So now you have built the Docker container and push it to the image registry. So what's next? That's it. Now you have to deploy the container to the Cloud Run. So once you have containerized your website and pushed to the container registry, you will deploy it to Cloud Run using this. So as I said before, there are two approaches for deploying to the Cloud Run. First one is Cloud Run on GKE. This is nothing but Cloud Run with an additional layer of control, which allows you to bring your own clusters and pods from GKE. Second option is the managed Cloud Run, the platform as a service model, where all container lifecycle is managed by the Cloud Run product itself. You will be using this approach in the lab. So please note when you execute Cloud Run deploy command, you should specify the region in which you are going to run it. So say, for example, if you are in Singapore, you will be giving Asia Southeast one. And you will be if you are running it from Mumbai, you will be re running it from the Mumbai region, Mumbai zone. So make sure you give the specify the region closest to you, where from where you are going to run this application. So just give the number of the region and uh, just execute the Cloud Run deployment. And uh, for lab purpose, you will be allowing unauthenticated request into the application. So once the deployment is done, you can verify it by clicking the URL of the app and check if the website is functioning properly. So in the output of the command, you will get the URL. Just click that URL, and you will be redirected to the website. So the same website, which you ran from your local in the previous step, would now be running in cloud, GCP. Similar to Cloud Build, you can also view the deployment status in the console, in the Cloud Run. So say, same like Cloud Build, we also have a service for Cloud Run. And in the console, you can view all the build related details. Deployment details, revision, everything will be available over there. Next, creating a new revision. So now you have deployed the Cloud Run. So there is one revision available, one revision created. Now you are going to deploy your application again by adjusting one of the parameters. So by default, Cloud Run will have a concurrency value of 80. So what does that mean is each container instance will serve up to 80 requests at a time. So that's what the con concurrency value 80 means. This is a big departure from the functions as a service model, where one instance will handle one request at a time. So this is completely different from that functions model. So now redeploy the same container image, but with a different concurrency value. So for testing purpose, you can give a concurrency value of one and uh, just execute the Cloud Run deployment command. After you have done that, you will be seeing two revisions in the Cloud Run console. So though this configuration is sufficient, sufficient for testing, in most production scenarios, you will have containers supporting multiple concurrent requests. So you can have multiple containers with, uh, containers with multiple requests, actually. So after you've done this, tested this, uh, in the Cloud Run console, you will see two revisions available now. So one for the previous one with concurrency value 80, and now with the concurrency value 1. And once you have tested this, just restore the original concurrency to 80 without redeploying. And uh, because we will be using this concurrency value for our uh, original deployment lab. Next, now you have deployed your website and it is live. But your developer has made a change. Like say, for example, you got a situation. Your marketing manager asked you to change the home page for your website. So. They think they think there should be more informative of who your company is and what you actually sell to give more details about your company. And because of this, you need to make some changes to the website. So you are going to add some text to the home page so that the marketing team is happy and uh, your website has these changes. So don't worry, for the lab purpose, we already have this change for you. So just use the new index.js file that is readily available to get the new changes. And you will be updating the React components for this. And once done, you need to build the React app so that you generate the static files again. And once the code is updated, rebuild your Docker container and push it to the container registry, like how we did in the previous steps. 
So you'll be using the same, same steps as before, except this time you will update the version label, which is 2.0.0. So the previous revision label will be 1.0, and here it will be 2.0. So just note down this difference. Now, you have made the changes to the website. Now you want to deploy it. So the marketing team is happy with your changes. They're uh, happy with their updates. Now it is time to update the website without without any interruption to the interruption to the users. That's important. That is the zero downtime. So the users are not impacted by this. Your website application is not down. So the website is serving all the requests by all the users across the globe. Now, Cloud Run treats each deployment as a new revision, which will be first brought online, and then have the traffic redirected to it. Uh, by default, the latest revision, whatever the latest revision that you have deployed, will be assigned 100% of the inbound traffic. If you want to allocate different percentage, so I know that the next question will be like, is it possible to allocate different percentages of traffic to different revisions? Yes, that is possible in Cloud Run. So if you want to do that, uh, just use the routes feature. So there is a routes feature so in which you can specify what is the percentage of traffic that you needs to go to specific revisions. So that a percentage of traffic goes to a previous revision and some percentage goes to the new revision so that you can test in this way whether your changes are good, whether uh, any uh, issues you are facing it. And once then you can maybe redirect all the 100% to the new revision. So from Cloud Shell, as usual, re-apply the service to update the image to the new version. That is 2.0.0. And once then, verify the deployment by going to the same URL. And now you should be able to see the new changes. This is, uh, this is what I meant by uh, saying what is updating the website with zero downtime. Now, after completing all this, this is another important step. So this cleanup will save you considerable amount of money, actually. So I have seen literally myself in enterprise-related companies. Uh, they have saved more than 40 percentage cost just by following proper housekeeping and automated cleanups. Uh, after the lab, yes, all the resources that you created will be destroyed. But I want you all to do this by yourself and notice the difference. Because this is a very good practice to follow to avoid some surprise spikes in your monthly cloud bill. So this is a really good practice that you should follow it. So delete all the resources that you have created in the lab, like for example, container registry images, cloud bill artifacts from cloud storage, and finally, the cloud run service. Learnings. So what are the key takeaways? So at the end of the lab, you would have successfully deployed, descaled, rescaled, and updated your website on Cloud Run. So you would have used Docker image to build the, uh, using Cloud Build uh, to create the Docker container, then push it to the uh, GCI container registry, and uh, deployed that image to the Cloud Run, and uh, created multiple revisions, and uh, make the changes to the website, and created a new deployment, and setting up an endpoint to Cloud Run, updated the application with zero dynamic. Everything, all these are the learnings from your from this lab. OK, I hope everyone got an overview of what this lab is about and what to expect from it. So yes. So before I talk about the next activity, uh, any questions? Yeah. Anil, we will give you the uh, comparisons. Like, what is the concurrency that's needed? And uh, we'll give you these details. OK, so uh, before I hand it over to Subhanya, I'll tell you what is going to happen. So I'll stop this sc uh, screen share for, his, uh, for some five minutes. And then I will start sharing the screen again. And I will be doing the lab myself. So you, if you want to watch a demo, you can just watch my screen. But at the same time, uh, our team will also give you the code using which you can start the lab by yourself. So if you want to start the lab by yourself, just begin the lab and start doing. And if you want to refer, just you can watch my screen. I will also be doing the lab uh, now. And you can get an idea of how it is happening. And uh, But do remember, once you click start the lab, the timer will start running. And uh, it this lab is time for one hour. So after one hour, the lab will end. So make sure you check the timing. So yes, uh, over to you, Sukanya. Thanks, everyone. 
lab. Okay, it will ask for the lab access code. So this is the code that I have got. And just copy paste this. Oh, it's saying it's already used. Yeah, so if you see here, I have used the code, and now I, the lab lab has been started. Okay. Is everyone able to put their access code? Just let us know if anyone has any questions in the chat box. Okay, I have begun the lab. So if somebody wants to watch a demo or just refer to the screen, you can just watch my screen and uh, refer. I hope everyone has started the lab. In case there is any doubt while you're doing the lab or any questions that you want to ask, feel free to drop in on the chat box. Okay. 